What is going on guys, Wiser here, and I am coming to you with uh, the release of our very first episode of Slay My Base Review, uh, something that Kadik and I uh, have released open to the public. You guys can send us your bases as long as they have followed uh, kind of the uh, uh, principles our base building series has laid down uh, to date. Uh, and if we like your base and like uh, what you've sent us, then you know, there's a chance that we're going to do this. So I am obviously here with Kadik. How you doing, man? Hey man, I'm doing good. Thanks. Yeah, good to have you back. Um, you know, we always have a lot of fun, and I'm really excited about this series because we have definitely been given, um, at, at least so far, I've gotten a pretty good amount of feedback. Uh, definitely going to have a lot of uh, bases to show you guys and to tear down here. So why don't we just jump right into this, Caddick? I'm going to hop on over to our Twiddler we got open here. Um, this was, uh, I think his name was G. Uh, Ji Lang Sung. Um, sorry, a lot of the names are very difficult to pronounce, guys. So if I don't get it, um, hopefully you just recognize your base here. And uh, But this guy, I just want to say before we get into this, uh, I chose this base first because this guy um, really showed me in the email um, that he knew uh, and had watched all of our videos diligently, uh, broke his base down for me in every aspect of our base building series and talked about what he was thinking and where he placed it and why, what he thought was good and what he thought was bad about the base. Um, you know, so uh, one thing he had mentioned specifically is he was very happy with the overall Lalo defense, he thought. He was a little concerned about the hogging aspect of the base and was worried about that. So maybe keep those things in mind, Caddick, as you kind of start here. So uh, start us off and what do you see about this base? Okay, so my idea was to keep a, a general uh, checklist down and uh, go from there because it's the easiest and the easiest way to think about bases anyway. So the first thing we're going to talk about is obviously the Archer Queen and her compartment. I really like how she's tucked in safely uh, behind uh, a double wall on the outside here, uh, behind a double wall here and all the way around and she's not going to jump over. There's three spaces on each side. So she, she's not going to jump. So she her compartment is pretty safe. So that's a really good point. Yep. Um, then the first thing I see when I look at the Archer Queen is there's a couple of storages in here. My general rule with those is um, if an enemy gets stuck on those, um, even the Archer Queen on a walk, well, it might be tricky in that case, but it's, um, it could still happen. The Your Archer Queen will engage. So those storages will not really prevent anything. So that's why I always say just move them out. Move a storage here, move a storage here. Make it hard to get to, to her and not um, stall them after they've killed her. Yep. Now, in the same aspect, it's not necessarily you know, a bad thing, I guess, to, to stall them out after. Um, no, oh, definitely one thing, really not. One thing when I'm designing bases, I'll look for something. Because a lot of times... Um, because you don't want your air defense right near all your archer queen because you don't want to open yourself up to just a CB Lalo, obviously. Um, sometimes it still needs to be very close. So what I'll do is I'll stack. Um, this is kind of a good example. I hope I'm on the right drawing thing. These two things and this right here are probably, and I mean this right here, are going to prevent anything from stepping up and getting that before they get taken down kind of thing, just just as a thought. Yeah, um, they will get sold a very long time there. Uh, so Which again, is really nice. Really, it, they're it, gonna get it depends, on the, it depends on the purpose, right? Uh, yep. of, of what you're, you're using it for. Um, so I think in this example, uh, you might want to swap one, at least one or two of those out, right, to to help Basically. slow down that walk. Yes, I would uh, swap out these two. Yeah. Um, and then the next point is the sweeper down here. I like it. Um, it's pointing out like this, approximately. I'm not sure if it's completely out, but it should be close. Um, that's going to prevent dragons. Um, it's not going to be too hard. I mean, there's an air defense here. That range should be around here somewhere. Um, so dragons could come in from this angle and funnel them in towards here and still get your archer queen. So in this case, because I think you uh, are right on your Lalo defense, it's quite good. I mean, the uh, Air defenses are quite far away. In that case, take one of those uh, mines, I don't know which one, but doesn't really matter, and place it in, in such a way that um, you can't easily trigger that black mine, 
But also, um, yeah, the, the main thing is once the Archer Queen engages, the Black Mine has to block. Something he would him. have to do in that case, it, it, at least from my experience when I'm using a Black Mine, you'd have to throw a defense, like a mortar or something out there, so that you can't just send in a balloon to trigger it. You know what I'm saying? Like the balloon would stop here and probably die before it got in range of the mine. Does yes, that that's the sense? idea. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly the idea. In this case, I think uh, a loon would probably travel towards the archer tower. Oh, yes, but if it's yeah. dropped down here, it could still trigger it. So keep that in mind. It's not the most, I mean, it's not the worst, but um, it could uh, save your queen. Yeah, basically. absolutely. So that's fine. Um, yeah, I think uh, overall, it's a good looking uh, archer queen chamber. The one other thing uh, I was looking at uh, when I first saw this. I'm pretty sure a queen can stand here and hit this wizard tower and you should check the ranges there because if that's in range of uh, your queen she will engage and um, well basically get taken out. Yeah. So these walls might be better off uh, just just a tad further out. I'm not too certain about it so check the range there. I can't see it from here. Absolutely. But I, I like you said overall I like the queen chamber when I saw this space. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So do I. Um, so the next point is the walls, the compartments. Um, when I do a quick glance, I see that there's enough uh, compartments. I don't think there's a need to count them. Um, so that's good. Uh, props there. Uh, one thing I do notice is this wall. I need to double check that. Is that eight or nine spaces? Three, four, five, six. I think it's seven. Eight spaces. spaces. It's eight it's spaces. Eight spaces. Three, yeah. Four, five, uh, from six, seven, you need eight, to yeah. have the first wall, last wall. That's eight spaces. Um, I've seen a lot of people earthquake this, so that that's uh, a big issue in my opinion. Yeah, you will have to come up with uh, something for this air defense because if you move this wall out, which would be my first idea, like that, um, this air defense will be in range of the queen walk. Um, so think of something for that, but that wall needs to move. That's a really important one. Yeah. Now, something that is going for that. Now, the, now the problem would be an, an entry from here, right? Because at least you have, he has the double walls kind of all the way along here. So it's not like you could just do an easy wall break and then get in here with uh, with just the earthquake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, you would have to enter in here. From here and you then could. a golem will probably walk towards this mortar and get roasted by the Tesla farm. But that's the first hit. So um, yeah, that would be really nice to defend the first hit with. Uh, on second hit, it might be a bit tougher for you, but mm -hmm. still, yeah. But I, do, I see what you're saying. And uh, while we're kind of quickly, I know we're going to get there, but yeah, re really good air defense placements overall as well. Um, I don't want to get you off topic here, so. <laughs> no, definitely not. It's good. I mean, they're away from the the queen. I, I That's just the next thing. Let's do it. Um, they're away from the queen. Uh, decent shape. This is my most used uh, shape for air defense because it just works. Um, all of them, I mean, there's no way a queen can walk down at the south and get one. This one is tucked in like four spaces behind the wall, wall, so it will not get targeted, even not from this knock in here, because it's uh, two spaces here. Yep. And this one is safe as well. So really good job there. And uh, you've doubled up on the, the black mines away from the queen, so I like that as well. So it's very good. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about bombs is these two, they're in between the Teslas on the outside, that's good. That basically kills every single loon that's going in there. Yeah, and just speaking of that compartment in general, I think the only thing in range of that air defense might be those bottom two. Other than that, I think that, that, that this top section of defenses in there are out of range of these two air defense. So when a hound paths through, once it gets through to the air defense, these Teslas and all that are going to be targeting the incoming balloons, not the Hound. And that's the yeah. key there, right? Yeah, basically. And um, so once again, on the first hit, that's very good. Uh, on a second hit, uh, that's a, a, uh, something I saw. You could place a queen here at the dark barracks, funnel here at the army camp. And with a rage, you can take out all four Teslas and walk her down. Yeah. Which might be an issue for later on. Um but I just wanted to mention it, and now we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. So for first hit, I think it's really good to have it there. For second hit, with a really good attacker, 
uh, they will ex exploit that basically. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's also not much, there's nothing on the outside of the base to stall balloons to get to, to allow this to do the damage to the balloons. There's nothing on the outside here. So especially on a second hit, it doesn't matter if you send your hounds in and they're out of range because you send your hounds in, drop a rage and a bunch of balloons and this is that's going to go down instantly. Yeah, but once again, the Archer Queen is way away from those air defenses. So in my opinion, it's fine. Yeah. Against air defense, it should be completely fine. Yeah. Um, then, now we're on that compartment anyways. That expo over there is grounded. I like that. That's really good. Um, I mean, you're forced to burn a rage here anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But this is area is very well defended against air, so I like that um, expo being grounded. And uh, one last thing on the topic, this sweeper is out here. Yeah. Um, I know it's an issue for Queen Walk, but when it's raged and she's starting over here, I believe she will be out of range. Once again, check the ranges. I'm not sure. I mean, I can't check them in here. Um, but I think she will be out of range. The healers will be at least, right? Because they're going to be yeah. back almost on that wall. And that's the most important part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, however, I think uh, what he was thinking there, right, it's covering, not only covering both those air defense, but also covering the Lalo trap on the outside. You know, things are going to struggle getting through there. Like I had said, you drop a rage there. Well, that sweeper is going to be working against them at the same time. So it's oh, not yeah. going to go down as quickly as I kind of maybe initially thought. Um, yep. So. I think this is a really good example of uh, a Lalo uh, defense base, so to say. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. So let's move on towards the hogs. Yep. Um, we have two double sets in this base. Let's start it with uh, the set on 12 o'clock, basically. Um, I can draw lines of hogs from any defense up here, which I'm just going to do right now. Um, and let's see, they will move there. Like, there's no way they will not move over cleanly. Yep, absolutely. That is there's a no very, way. very pure, excellent example of a, of a pure DGB. Yep, it's perfectly placed. It's away from the Archer Queen. There's um, no way once again, this earthquake is the issue, but we're not going to talk about that. Yep. Um, the DGB is really nice. You so cannot I just target to it. That. You cannot defuse it with the Queen Walk. It, there's enough defenses before it that you're going to have to make a very large investment of hogs to to defuse it right it, it's 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 buried like really really the absolute perfect in my opinion example of a pure pathing dgb yes it definitely is um then the dgb at five o'clock um this mortar over here messes things up yeah this one um yeah i know it's tough to do but it is possible to drop three hooks there two hooks here three hooks here i know this tesla farm's there but let's just ignore it for now um they will go down pretty much simultaneously, uh, these two at the south, and uh, might trigger the, those uh, one of those bombs. Yeah. So with the heal, it's possible to defuse it. Yeah, or so. maybe not even heal it. I mean, you can save it for later on. Well, if there's only two-point defense, and I'm pretty sure if you dropped a giant, because look how close the builder side is to the wall. If you yeah. dropped a giant right there, it's going to tank for both of those. Five hogs could easily, I think, get yep. rid of that. Could but get it. Yep. Um, but other than that, it's a very nice, um, good DGB set. For sure, uh, it's for also, not, is also not defusible yep. by a queen walk, right? Yep, it isn't. So that's really nice. So good job there, man. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing is uh, the spring traps. Um, these uh, might trigger, might not trigger. I like to put them in between and just put one in between because that one spring in between is, um, in this case... Um, there's only two ways to go over. I mean, three ways. It will go over. Um, they will go over and trigger at least two hawks, probably three hawks, unless there's of course less hawks alive. But that's a, a good thing, you know. Yeah. Um, so all of those spring traps have have the same thing. Um, an idea I would have is place one over here at the sweeper and air defense at. Uh, oh, I was just looking at that one. That's a perfect like, spot for one. Great and like. you could. Uh, have this archer tower over there, move it down one spot, move it in, and then there's only one spot, once again, just sneak it in between there. Yeah. And that would leave you with uh, one more spring trap. 
um, because all of those, all of these doubles need to be uh, changed up with just one screen trap, basically. Mm -hmm. And you can find another uh, space. I mean, it might be a bit tough at first, but I think it's possible. So look for that and uh, sneak them in between and really think about where the hogs are going to path. I mean, the one at 8 o'clock, let's just keep it as an example. Hogs will come in from 12, go towards the cannon, go towards the sweeper and move like this. The other way around, they come from 6, move up, move up. That's a perfect spring over there. There's yep. no way it's not going to trigger three hogs. Yeah, but definitely, so definitely that mortar's got to go. I was going to say, I'm not a fan of that cannon and the sweeper in the core there. Um, just because it almost works like, I guess that sweeper kind of helps, but I just would worry about things just coming straight across here. Um, I don't know, maybe. Yes, I'm, I agree on that one. Okay. Um, the placement on this cannon is uh, good overall. Um, I mean, this is a typical flank cannon, as I would call it. Um if a queen comes in here or a king, they will be moving towards the queen and then that cannon will have free reign the whole time, which is a really good thing. So um, it's a, it has a nice spot, but it's uh, to me, it's more... Um, mm, I'm not too sure. Hmm. It, it does lure uh, golems and stuff into the queen chamber, so I think moving it would be better in the end. Yeah, I agree. Yep, I agree with you on that one. Um. I think as a general statement, my biggest thing uh, overall for this base would be uh, take some of these mortars and archer towers and kind of sprinkle them more on the outside. Um, that way, what you're going to do, uh, th this is all relating to spring traps, but w get a couple of those, a few of those defenses on the outside of your base. It's going to free up yourself up to move your defenses a little bit, shift them in the compartment so you can create better spring trap locations as a general statement because you don't have one defense on the outside of the walls which i'm not isn't necessarily a bad thing um but i i like having my arch towers on the outside because i know people are gonna have to come up with a plan to ensure that their golems don't go for a walk right that's one thing and another thing um, um just imagine uh, this whole section of the base being gone um, and there's an arch uh, tower standing right over there. There's two walls they have to break through to get to this one arch tower. Yeah. I mean, it's an extreme example, but it's the same principle. Uh, the outside basically is another compartment. Use it. That's a there's good no point. reason not to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to overload it. But I, I pretty much generally, almost, I think almost all the bases I build. I think all my archer towers are on the outside and, and some of, if not all of my mortars as well, um, just kind of staggered around. Yeah. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful with is uh, which is in that case. Yep. Yep. You know, that's why usually maybe I'll go two mortars and then two on the inside with some well, and generally they'll be offset from my wizard towers. Um, but and then the only thing you have to do from there is don't just plop it here because someone's just going to drop a balloon on it and, one for one it you have to protect it and another little thing about this base is all your buildings are sucked right in and now that the cc isn't a huge thing anymore uh i don't think you need to worry about the old school anchor principle where you don't leave an anchor um for your enemy i think it, it's ideal to not to try and not leave an anchor um but i i would personally rather have my buildings pushed out and leave a little bit of an anchor um, because I find it's a lot harder to target loons, hogs, and wall breakers specifically. Especially hogs and uh, wall breakers. I mean loons, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. I've been using the uh, army camps for that purpose myself. Um, just move them out. Um, yeah. It's just an example. I would not recommend it in this case. But if you were to place like army camp, army camp, army camp, army camp, uh, the loons will have to travel forever before they're there. Yeah. Just an idea. I would not, re not recommend it uh, in this case once again, but uh, think about it. I remember Iron Wolf said to me, he's like, as a general rule of the very last step, there's two things you do in the very last step to building your base. Number one is push every building out as far as it possibly goes without creating a hole and without creating an obvious flaw, I guess would be the most general way to say it. And to ensure that your best walls are your core walls. 
um, you know, you, you do a pretty good example of the wall system because you're protecting your queen chamber, which is good. There's no wall breakers going to be going in against that and then the one behind it, right? And the reason of that is it doesn't matter if you have lava walls or if you have skull walls on the outside, three wall breakers is going to take it down. So you want your core to be the strongest. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, so the last thing, that's, uh, I think that would be a good ender. How I would personally attack this base um, is the queen walk I suggested with a rage over here, uh, probably even break her in down there and make it go in, take out this DGB. Uh, the earthquake we talked about with the kill squad, and Valkyries probably, um, because these buildings are touching, these buildings are touching. Uh, I think it's quite an easy funnel from mm -hmm. over here to over here. Um, jump Easy. the first earthquake, the second, maybe, cold I don't know, not sure. Yeah, exactly. Because one uh, dome right in between here is going to get both those archer towers. And like a, like we just talked about, there's nothing on the outside of your base. So one wizard, one wizard, Valkyries. <laughs> yep. And they will run in and probably don't need a heal. And uh, yeah, surgical the rest of the base. That's the way I would take this one out. Yep. So think about those things. Uh, another way to do it is with a zap quake on this top air defense. So do not stack uh, black mines uh, over there uh, with the same queen walk. So this this queen walk at the south is the main thing I would say to improve on, and this earthquake. So yeah. um, having that out of the way, I'd say let's move to the second base. Absolutely, but uh, overall good job here. Yep, absolutely good job. Right, I uh, really so, like the base. So this next one. Um, sorry, I forget all these names and most of the names I can't even pronounce. So I'm not even going to try. We'll just uh, hopefully you recognize your base here, guys, as it gets thrown up. So um, start her off. Okay. So first of all, I'm impressed. Let's just say that. I'm just impressed with uh, most of the base that come in. I mean, uh, Wiser, you told me about most of the base being really good. So uh, thank you, guys. I mean... I'm honored to, to see th these amounts of good bases coming in. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, just wanted to say that. Um, so, first of all, the Queen Chamber. Um, I like it. It's quite deep. I mean, there's uh, five spaces even towards the corners here. There's four spaces towards the core. There's no way, no way she's going to jump. Yep. No, I, unless, I, unless there's a golem somehow miraculously. Uh, walking Way to that side of the yeah. mortar and then moving towards the expo while still being up. So there's no way. Yep. So very good job on that one. I was checking the ranges actually when I was looking at this base and um, kind of drawing them out as I was, you know how you can uh, do the count the spaces using the circle function or whatever. Um, and I don't even know if this base can, if this queen can be walked. It would be very, very difficult this is i was really impressed with this queen chamber overall yep i think it's really good um there's two black mines so that's a huge investment so um that does uh, make the rest of the base more vulnerable to a, a lava loon attack but still um yeah um i would not dragon this uh, this queen i mean there's no way um if i bring a golem uh, the golem will walk up towards that cannon so I, i'm forced to come at this side um, so a Suicide King would probably work, but he will only get like this section. Barely of anything, it's yeah. not too much. He would get the Queen at a, at basically, a, I guess you'd have to bring like two Wizards probably as well. So like 38 yep. troop investment, um, which isn't bad. Um, but again, no, you're, but you're doing that just to swap the Queen, so. Yep, I like it. It's uh, very well done. Because I was um, looking at those Black Mines as well. And at first I was like, those are kind of, I would never use two black mines in my queen chamber, but I was looking at the rest and the way the air defense are placed. I don't think there's any way other than a split kill squad that you could get any of the air defense and the queen. No. Very difficult not. at least. There's not. Um, I believe the queen charge would actually wreck this base, but that's, once again, that's a pretty high level <laughs> stuff. So, yeah. um, and yeah, the I mean, being sweepers are placed uh, really well uh, to prevent that. So good job on that. Yeah, now, now the, the, the kind of trouble area comes right here. Sorry, I should be using the circles, but um, you open that up and now all four air defense are opened up. So yep. um, let's continue on with our checklist here, I guess, uh, before we get ahead of ourselves. But 
the compartments. So yeah, let's talk about it. Um, oh, one more thing about the queen chamber. Uh, sorry, right at the bottom there, that uh, bomb is not going to help. Oh, Wall breakers yes. dropped over here. Uh, are going to walk there and there towards the defenses because this is empty space. And even if there was something, even if it wasn't an empty space, you need the small, the time it takes for a small bomb to go off versus the amount of time it takes for a wall breaker to drop his bomb. Is it, there, there is a difference there. So if your wall breaker, you can drop right beside a wall. It doesn't matter if there's a bomb there. It's going to drop the bomb before the small bomb explodes. True, but if there's like three dropped at almost the same time, the last two will die. So the oh, placement okay. of the bomb is good. Um, it's just not effective. So, okay. but whatever. Let's. Uh, it's details, just like these red bombs. We'll talk about it later. But I believe they can be placed in better places. Um, so uh, compartments. Um, you were talking about an uh, earthquake on the top. I absolutely agree on that one, uh, because that uh, earthquake opens up all four air defenses. So to me, that's the main weakness of this base. The way to exploit it, um, I mean, there's difference of uh, opinions there probably, but uh, Govalo, for example, would work on this base. Um, but still, it's tough to take out the queen, but I believe it's possible to like have a quake and a, a jump or just a double jump. Well, yeah. not a double jump, in my opinion, but you get the picture. Well, I mean, you just you could just do what we said, the king swap with a golem for the queen and then send in a CB, CB with Valks from 12 with the queen. Yeah. Right. And, and another thing about uh, that quake is, um, I mean, you need to clear at least one of these side compartments to make sure a funnel goes well. So I would um, have to, you have to think about something for it and um, then pr pretty much open up the top. They will stray a bit, but probably come back because of their storage there, or even come in down there, uh, come in uh, with two golems, like in this whole area, and then move in. Mm -hmm. That ensures good pathing. So it's tricky to do, so good job on that. Um, but that's the way I would exploit this base, um, with all of the air defense uh, being there, and um, this one earthquake, even though the queen is not exposed, opens up all four giant bombs. That's another thing I spotted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for now, let's stick to um, the air defenses. Just the uh, air defenses. Um, I like that they're away from the queen. Um, let's see. They're spread out pretty much. These two are covering each other. I believe these two will be covering each other as well. So that's a really good job over there. I mean, um, it just makes it so much more risky to, uh, to come in with a lava from any direction. Um, mm, if I were to deploy my lava hounds, I would come from this angle probably, um, and one straight up. So any trap, so this trap is actually very nicely placed. Because if, if I drop the lava down here, it will still go there, but it will still not trigger it. So really good job on that one. But mm -hmm. maybe double up on that uh, red bomb. It will probably... Um, kill more loons there. I mean, this is a very good loon trap. Uh, loons will clump up on that cannon or over here and come in and clump up on the wizard tower, get fried. So, I like it. I yeah. really like it. Um, other than that, the sweepers are pointed towards the sides, um, covering at least two air defenses of each. I mean, uh, or an air defense and the loon trap. So... Yeah, very nice uh, defense. The only thing I would comment on is um, the red bombs um, over here. I mean, that's it's, it's just too many in my opinion. I, yeah. I think it's better served if there if there's like a second one over here somewhere, and um, the last one where would balloons end on this raid? Um. You need to deal with this, so they will probably end up down here somewhere. So a red bomb over there or over here would be valuable. Yeah, you can keep one uh, one over here to to help uh, prevent loons coming in uh, or dragons, but three is just too many. Yeah, good job. Very yeah, nice overall, base. I mean, I, I never use red bombs for the for in um, my queen chamber. I mean, they just don't do anything to dragons. They just don't. True, 
but I mean, once again, if you don't have a really solid plan to take out the whole Archer Queen chamber, sometimes it's really valuable to have them there because uh, they can be the last defenses up. So this red bomb could be the end together with those wizard towers yeah, of yeah, like a group of huge. balloons. But what I do is I generally will put them with my wizard towers. So that's kind of <laughs> where the that's trade general is. Rule. He has yeah. the wizard towers in the queen chamber. So it's kind of like, well, it, it makes it, sense. It would work, right? Definitely. Um, so uh, next part, the hogging part, uh, as we talked about, the all of the bombs are, wait a second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's tricky, but this can be jumped. I just realized it. Oh, yes. That needs to be fixed. Yeah. That does need to be fixed. Because a golem here, golem here, uh, they will path uh, in towards uh, this archer tower. I mean, if you open it up with a jump, it will reroute. Um, and then move to get together in. Then you have a second jump over here. And then Valkyrs will rock your base. With double jump, yeah. Or, I mean, just in, just in general, you're, uh, you're allowing all four bombs to be diffused via two spell slots. So that's a problem. That's a problem. You are you are forcing a, a heal over there, so that's very nice. Um, so in this section, um, around there, I mean, the, I know there's a wall there, but that would be the ideal spot for another one, I suppose. Um, but then again, it, it's a tough call on this base. So yeah. I give you that one. Yeah. So the, the double giant bomb pathing, uh, let's just look at it quickly. These hogs will be moving down, so they're not an issue. These hogs will be staying here and then pathing towards the expo. And because there's a wall here, I do not think they will trigger these bombs. Um, so I think it's a clean shot from that side. Yeah. I mean, who's going to leave their hogs there and not take this out? I mean, come on. Now, my only thought is... What the heck? Why did this stay open? My only thought... Um is if this and this go down at the same time. I might be slightly worried about that kind of pathing. I don't I think that's kind of a long shot maybe, but I think it's clean enough to do. I mean, you have to see it in action. Um I don't think it is an issue to be honest. What do you think it oh, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. No, what I do think is an issue about this double bomb set is uh, come with a kill squad at the queen, straight at the queen, uh, jump in and leave the kill squad in here. They will take out most of the Tesla farm and the double bomb set to Expos, um, which does allow someone to come in and hog. Once again, um, that's a really tough thing to do because a um, really big compliment, these springs, I love them. Yep, 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 absolutely. Um, the only... Two I would critique are these two over here, um, but then again, Hawks will come in from that angle basically towards the wizard tower and then go up. So that's a good spring. Is it a two-way spring? Yes, it's a two-way spring. The only way it will not trigger properly if you come from the side of the expo, um, but the other one is this one. Um, it can be used, for example, over here to trigger three Hawks instead of the one or two you're going to trigger now. Yeah. Yeah, right where you but, drew is a perfect spot, actually. Yeah, but this is nitpicky. Keep that in mind. Everything I'm saying about this base, except for maybe this jump, is pretty nitpicky. Yeah. Um, okay, so any other things you're seeing right now? Uh, no, I mean, uh, the, the singles need to move, and uh, especially if you want to keep the DGB there. But I think in general, you might want to just look at... at maybe moving some stuff around so you could split up the DGB and singles a little bit better um, and not allow it to be diffused with a entry into the queen chamber. Yes. Um, another thing, you might be able to save two walls over here. I mean, what's the purpose of those two walls? Um, the clan castle, you might want to move it in towards the queen. Um, I know it's going to be almost uh, like the range is going to be like this pretty much. But um, I think it's worth it. Um, it gives a really late trigger if you're coming from the north. And it gives a quite early trigger to protect the queen better if they come from the south. Yeah. So cons consider it moving, uh, considering moving the CC. Um, 
And I have one more thing. Yes, that's the more uh, recent style of attacking, which is the queen charge. I think this base is vulnerable to queen charges because all of the storages are on the outside. Um, there's no way for troops to be stalled on the inside, except for like uh, the one gold storage, one CC, uh, yeah, and no, the one time hole. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big issue of this base. Like Valkyries or something, they will get massive value because they're never going to get stalled, especially Queen. I mean, um, imagine dropping her at the mortar at 2 o'clock, bringing a couple of wizards to burn through those uh, storages, and then you can move her in. I know the sweeper's pointed correctly, and so is this one. Um, so it's a tough thing to do, but you're going to need to burn a rage anyway. So keep... Yeah, that's the one thing I don't like, basically. Mm -hmm. Need a little more meat inside the base. So once something gets in there, there is stuff to hold them up in certain locations in your base. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, amazing job. I mean, I'm impressed by the base. Let's yeah, just say I like that. this one. I really like it. Uh, great job. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's those bases you look at and you just kind of instantly are like, wow, I'll just do that. Like it doesn't always work, but you just immediately can envision how you're going to attack that base. This was not one of those bases. I, I literally I opened it up from the email and I was looking at it and start, did what you did. I looked at the queen chamber and, and just kind of trying to measure some sizing and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good queen chamber. And I'm like, what, well, where are all the air defense? And I started looking at the air defense. And I'm like, oh, I guess you could open up all four air defense, but but then what? And I'm like, well, then I still have to have a plan for the king, for the queen because I would still not even get close to the queen. And I obviously I did not see um, this major thing because that that that's really the weakness to the base, right? Um, you're not only allowing all four bombs to to be accessible from one jump, but you're also allowing three air defense from one jump, right? I mean, yeah, with the queen is a fourth one. Yep. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, this skelly trap over here, uh, people will uh, want to come in uh, at that area, like in this area. So this, spring, uh, this skelly trap will get triggered. Uh, it might be better served over here. Um, this one is nice, very nice. You could even consider uh, pointing that one to air. To the air to add to that lalo trap. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and this is going to force a, a poison, basically. Um, so yeah. That's I might it. even, I might, yeah, I, I'd go, I definitely would go one air, one ground just be, because I feel your spring traps are all very, very effective, um, which are going to help you with the hogs, which means you don't necessarily need the double ground skellies. Um, yeah, so, but I like it. Yep. Great looking. I really like it. Good yeah. job. And how would I attack this? I think this is a tough call. I really do. So really good job over there. Um, I would either queen walk this side uh, down towards the queen, enter here together with the kill squad and jump towards the core. So the, uh, just because this uh, farm over here needs to be dealt with, another way to do it would be actually with this jump, double jump with uh, Valkyries with a heal in the core um, and basically support them with, with hogs yep. on the sides and have a, well, maybe not a heal over here uh, on the nine o'clock section. They probably don't need it, so you you still have a heal for the Tesla farm. I was just going to say that you probably want to heal the Valks when they get in range of that Tesla and Max boat. Yeah, in the core, but also heal the the hogs when they're in there. Oh yes, so that's that's the way I would take out this yes. base probably. Yeah, good job, man. All right, so uh, that'll conclude our uh, yeah, first episode of slay my base review uh i hope you guys enjoyed it uh keep sending me these bases as the as the email you know we can only do about two per episode and i'm getting a lot of good ones so don't be discouraged guys if we don't show you send me your base and we don't show it within a week because it's going to take a little bit for us to get through a lot of them um but as often as Kadik and I can get together to do these, we will keep pumping them out for you so keep sending them uh Kadik, appreciate you coming on as always <laughs> I love doing these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting a lot of good feedback on them, and people appreciate it. Some of this stuff people are saying, I just want to mention, guys, some of the things you guys are saying in the emails, things like, um, you know, one guy sent me a base and said, I'm not in a good enough clan to ever be messed up, to ever get a chance to attack an anti three star base. Um, just because that's the way your, your search goes for the war, right? You get, you get matched up against a lot of farming clans. And how everybody said, however, 
uh, because of your base building series, uh, I was able to make this and you know what, he built a pretty good base. I'm going to feature it coming down the road here. Um, just some things like that guys really keep us going on that because we know we're helping out. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of doing this. So, uh, that will do it for your wisdom from wiser. Just trying to help you guys bag that next tree star until then. We're out.